Welcome to the Positive Spiritual Living Podcast, brought to you by Unity on the Bay. This is your positive path for spiritual living. There's this woman who is uh, giving birth to twins. And uh, she needs to go to the hospital and give birth, and nobody is around except for her brother to take her, and she's a little concerned because her brother's a little out there. She's a little concerned, but sure enough, he takes her to the hospital, and uh, she gives birth, and as she gives birth, she was just so tired, she just fell right asleep. When she wakes up, when she comes to, her brother is there grinning, and he's, and she says, what's going on? Tell me, everything okay? She's like, oh my God, everything was great. You had a beautiful daughter. She's like, oh, wonderful. And I named her. And she goes, oh, geez. (laughs) What'd you name her? Her name is Denise. He goes, oh, that's actually pretty okay. That's good. All right. And what about the other one? The other one's a boy. She's like, and what did you name him? The nephew. I'll have you know, I'll have you know that the 930 service was either just much more willing to like lie to me and just step into the greatness of 2021, or maybe I told it a little different. I don't know. Anyways. (laughs) Yeah. uh So, (laughs) so here's the thing. Uh, I just connected with that joke because for me, names are important. And I think that especially during this service, the Whitestone Ceremony, which is a service or a ceremony, if you haven't been a part of it, where we really go within and check in and see whether spirit, divine wisdom, is sharing a new name or a new value or a new word that's going to lead us into this year to experience the things that we want to experience. And for me, names have been very important. I remember when Lucas was first born on the way to the hospital, um, my husband and I, Tom, were like throwing out names that we liked. And as we figured out which ones we both liked, I would call my sister up and say, okay, well, what does this mean? Look on the internet, what does it mean? And we settled on Lucas Gabriel, which means light, and strength. And I did that because that's what was coming up for me that I wanted him to always know. I always wanted him to know himself as the light of God. I wanted him to know that within him was all the strength that he needed to do whatever it was that he wanted to do in life. And from my own experience, you know, I I, I was um, conscientious of the importance of uh, what a name could be because many years ago I looked up what Juan meant and uh, as I read it then it was meant gift of gift from God now I didn't take it as an ego thing right like I'm this great gift of God I actually took it as a calling I took it as well how am I then expressing who I am to be a gift from God to the world to be a gift from God in my own life and in the life of those around me. So it was almost like a calling card. It was something that was um, reminding me of who I wanted to be moment by moment when I was conscientious of it. Now, funny enough, (laughs) I looked it up again this weekend just because I wanted to get the exact definition. It wasn't gift from God. (laughs) Apparently, my name means blessed by God. But here's the thing. I realized that that was, gift from God was the way in which I needed to understand myself, right, and name myself in that moment, and it served its purpose, and maybe there's been some transformation, there's been some shifts within me that now are calling me to recognize that I am blessed by God. And in that moment of realizing that that was what my name meant now, Um, it really did bring me into a a much more clear understanding of some of the blessings. I started thinking of all the ways in which I'm blessed, and I started feeling the gratitude within me. And I know that this is what is serving me now. And the reality is, is that in the Bible, there are many instances where people are renamed, right? Some of you may be aware, Abraham used to be Abram until he had his transformation and was given a new name, Abraham, which meant father to many. Sarai, which means quarrelsome, had her transformation experience and was renamed Sarah, which means princess. And many people would probably uh, know more the story of Saul, who was the tax collector and 
He was a character and had his vision, his transformation, and was named then Paul, the Apostle Paul. And Paul meaning humble, which was the complete opposite of the ways in which he was expressing as Saul in the world. And so this brings me to recognize that maybe in this moment, we have been transformed. Actually, not maybe. We have been transformed through the year that we have experienced, through the challenges, through the gifts, through the blessings, through the experiences of this past year, we have been transformed. We have been changed. We have been shifted. And so the question is, is there a new way that we can define ourselves as a result of it? What is the ways in which I can name myself, define myself? You know, in Unity, we're very aware of the power in affirmations and what we use the I am in connection with, right? Like, I am Juan. I am a gift, right? And we want to do the positive affirmations, the things that are calling us forward, never the things that are constricting us or keeping us in um, an old consciousness that we may not be sacred, we may not be good enough, that within us may not be everything, everything that we need to not only make this moment, but make this year all that we want to experience, all that we want it to be. And so the question is, how can we redefine ourselves? And from what space can we do it? Because so many times, if you're like me, you have to find yourself or named yourself based on outer circumstances, right? I didn't do good on this test. I didn't do good in this relationship. And that somehow I just owned it as a definition of who I was. And we have the ability to right here and right now to recognize that we can actually define ourselves based on our divine identity based on the ways in which God is alive within us. Imelda Shanklin, who was a unity minister, she talks about the fact that we came into this world with spiritual amnesia, that we've forgotten who we came here to be, and our work is to uncover that once again. And this is what she says. Someday you will become wholly awakened to your divine identity and will begin to consciously take on the image of perfection. We are the image of perfection. Not only can we define ourselves from that space, but we can live into that definition of who we are. And imagine, yeah, it's wonderful and great. I, I have many goals for this year. I have many intentions. But imagine if we're doing these or looking to uh, live into these goals and intentions from the space of our divine identity from knowing that we are this divine perfection and the image of this divine perfection. Imagine then how much more deeply you would live into the goals that you have for maybe perfect relationships, loving, mature, healthy relationships, for the ways in which you show up at work, the ways in which you show up in employment, the ways in which you express that which you are uniquely. You know, we are this wonderful image of perfection uniquely, created to express some beautiful thing, gift, that we are to be in the world. Imagine the ways in which we could experience prosperity and abundance, financial freedom, based on our divine identity. So what's in the horizon for you this year? 2021, you know, how do you see this year shaping up? What's at the horizon? for you and really think about that. What is the, the vision? What is the feeling? What is the experience that 2021 will be for you? And one of the things that I love about this idea of, you know, the horizon and this vision is, well, when you see the horizon and you're called forth from it, you got to actually walk towards it, <laughs> right? Like you got to like take the steps to be able to really uh, live into it. And so that's, I think, what we're uh, what's really powerful to do, especially during these moments, to be able to recognize that there is something really wonderful and really great that is calling us in this transformative way that we've shown up now based on what has been to now experience what will be, to experience ourselves in a new light, in a different light. So this service, uh, the ceremony, does that. It just invites us in, and it's based on a uh, quote from 
a Bible verse from Revelations. And it's Revelations chapter 2, verse 17. Let anyone who has an ear listen to what the Spirit is saying to the churches. To everyone who conquers, I will give you some of the hidden manna, and I will give you a white stone, and on the white stone is written a new name that no one knows except for the one who receives it. Let everyone who conquers, what are we conquering? If you're like me, <laughs> as we're celebrating the beginning of 2021, you're reflecting back on we made it through 2020. We were able to conquer the challenges, the difficulties. If not, you wouldn't be here, right? You were able to move beyond that which felt like limitation, that which felt like maybe some restriction. You were able to move from that, and you were able to conquer it. Now, the question is, for me, is there anything else that I need to conquer? Are there still some experiences or some um, feelings of not being good enough, of not being sacred? Are there still some fears that are for me to conquer in this new year? And the wonderful thing that I hear in this is that there's a promise there. Because the moment that we step into conquering that which needs to be healed within us, we shall be given the hidden manna. We shall be given that spiritual nourishment to carry us through. We shall be given the fruits of our work. And in that, we will once again be renamed. We will be reformed. We will be transformed. And there will be something that carries us beyond what we thought was possible. In a couple of days especially here in Miami, <laughs> um, there, there's going to be a celebration of the Epiphany, right? The celebration of Three Kings Day. And Three Kings Day is really about when the Magi showed up to the birth of something new. And it's really placing a focus on what those three kings did. By the way, um, nowhere does it say that they're kings in the Bible. Um, they're called magi, and the magi in those times, actually, it didn't mean somebody that pulled a rabbit out of a hat and, you know, did tricks and that sort of thing. And magi was actually somebody that just understood the laws of the universe. A magi was somebody that understood the connection between all of humanity, the universe, our relationship with God, our relationship to that which was invisible but felt. Think about ourselves embodying that magi knowledge, consciousness, to be able to see beyond and to experience the world through that consciousness, through those eyes. And so the magi brought three gifts, right, to uh, uh, the Christ, to this new birthing consciousness. I understood some of them. <laughs> um, I didn't un quite understand all of them until I started looking at it metaphysically. Because, I mean, I knew gold— frankincense, and then what the heck was myrrh, right? But gold, frankincense, and myrrh, metaphysically, they remind me of what I can bring to this moment, what I can bring to this year to be able to fulfill that vision of who I want to be. Not even who I want to be, what is being asked to be expressed through me. And so gold, for me, asks me, well, what is the beauty that I can add to this moment? What is the beauty I can add to my experiences? What, how, how is it that I can enrich this moment in time, enrich the relationships that I have, right? Exper you know, enrich and bring beauty even to this moment as I just look at Faye, right, and look at each and every one of you, even the people at home. What can I do to bring that beauty that is God to this moment and be fully aware of it. Frankincense, um, you know, if you think about it, so metaphysically it means the transmutation of something. You think about it, right, like it's a solid, you know, frankincense, and you burn it, and it sort of gets airy, right? And so it's this idea that we can look beyond what is material, and we can see the substance, the, the energy, the spirit behind everything, that is material. And so that to me just raises a question like, how can moment by moment, I not only just see through these human eyes, but through the eyes of spirit. Whenever something is happening, a challenge, a blessing, a relationship is happening, how can I um, recognize that it is even more, or it is even deeper 
than what I am experiencing through the world of senses. That there is something there that is showing me spiritual truth. That there is something there that is bringing me to a closer connection and awareness of my own spiritual journey and the awareness of God in my life. And then, of course, myrrh, which I'm glad to know now what myrrh is. Um, and I'm happy to bestow that awareness <laughs> to you. If you didn't know, myrrh is actually something that is uh, used as an oil, to an, in an oil, to anoint. So, okay, well, how can I then make every moment sacred? How can I anoint the experience? How can I consecrate it as an understanding and as an experience that is bringing me to a closer realization of my truth, that divine identity? How can I bring all of who I am to consecrate any moment, any experience, any relationship, because I am doing so knowing that I am bringing my spiritual identity into that experience? And so that, for me, is something that is being called uh, for us to do in this year. At least it's calling me to do it, to really wonder how I can do these things in order to what? Bring heaven on earth. One of the things that this new birth uh, that the three kings came to see, uh, this new birth that they came here to experience, um, one of the things that Jesus brought to our awareness and unity teaches is that heaven is a state of consciousness. Heaven is not necessarily a, a place, it is a state. It is a space within us, and heaven can be lived here on earth. I don't know about you, but after 2020, <laughs> I'm really committed to living heaven on earth. Not only for myself, but I'm really committed to allowing heaven to be birthed through me for all to experience. And if 2020 was the year of perfect vision, which I do believe it is the year of perfect vision, where we saw what, was, what I saw, what was important for me, what I saw was important for me to live into. Uh, I was able to see through the appearances to recognize God more fully. If 2020 was a year of perfect vision, then 20, 2021 is the year in which we use that vision to experience the world in a new way. It is the, way, it is the year of implementing all that we've learned through this perfect vision so that it's not wasted, but it brings us into a closer relationship with the divine that is within us. And so that's what I'm really clear on, and that's what I'm really bringing to this ceremony where I'm going to be receiving a word of value, a new name that calls me to a greater expression of my divine identity, of the spiritual identity that is not only um, alive within me, but it is pushing itself out and asking to be expressed in greater ways. And so what is the North Star that we will follow? What is that word? What is that way of being that will pull us to this great vision, to the horizon? I love the quote from Eric Butterworth that recognizes that we are the ways in which heaven is made known. Because I truly believe it. And I truly believe that this is the year, this is the moment, this is the experience that if we all knew this just a tiny bit deeper, we would see and experience a greater sense of love and peace and joy and gratitude in the world. And yes, we would make 2021 our best year yet. And he says, you are the windows of heaven and you will be poured out as a blessing. And because you are in the flow of limitless substance by reason of your commitment, the blessing that you become is more than sufficient to deal with any situation and to meet any and all requirements. We are the ones that are going to be poured out into the world. The moment that we say yes, yes, this is my spiritual identity. I am in the perfect image of God. And then live through that? We will be in that flow. Being in that flow is made easier with that one word, right? So many of us have experienced this uh, service before, and we've carried that stone with us as a reminder to be in the flow of that which we came here to be. And the moment we do that is the moment that we have everything within us sufficient to meet any challenge. Let's be honest. We've all said we welcome in the new year, and... Now that things are starting to clear up a little bit, we realize it is a brand new year, but we've still got some of the same challenges that we were facing in 2020. 
Some of the same issues are still alive within the community, within the world. And we have been transformed. We can respond to them in a different light. And we can not only um, uh, experience them, but we can thrive through them. And we can use them to once again go deeper and deeper and deeper to know our truth. So it's for us to follow that North Star. I don't know what word will come up for you. I got mine at the 930. Uh, Sandra and I are going to confirm our words since we're doing this service again. Um, But whatever comes up for you, just trust it. Trust that the divine wisdom that you are is asking you to express this more fully, is telling you that this is what you can be in the flow of and through that be the windows of heaven. So let's just take a deep breath. Just fully knowing what a beautiful, perfect moment this is. We're going to be led through our meditation song. I invite you to bring out your uh, stone. Just hold it in your hands while we're being led through that song. If you're at home and don't have a stone, bring out a journal, a piece of paper, as we continue with the ceremony. And so if you can, just holding your stone, I invite you to take a breath. And if you haven't done so already, to gently close your eyes and relax into this experience. relaxing into a knowing that the very presence of God is here in this moment. 
that the presence of God is within you as you. And that in this moment, God's peace and comfort, God's guidance and inspiration are sustaining you and calming you in to this moment, sacred, sacred moment. As it's comfortable for you, take another breath. And we call forth that gold within us, that very essence of us that brings beauty and richness to this experience. We call forth our own understanding of that incense deep within us that allows us to see beyond the material, recognizing the spiritual substance of all. And we call forth that power of our own myrrh, consecrating this experience, knowing that something sacred is taking place within us, within this time. And we also call forth the divine wisdom that we are. God's guidance alive within us. God's very essence being reborn here and now. We are being rebirthed. We are being transformed. And so in this moment, we simply allow ourselves to move deeper into this experience. releasing any fears, any lingering thoughts of not being worthy or good enough, any old patterns of being, our old selves we let go. As we are rebirthed into this moment and into a greater vision of who we are, as spiritual beings. I am that I am. <laughs> Outside of us, there's so much going on and within us, there is still a peace, a greater understanding of our truth. And so here in this moment, we call forth that divine spirit. We call forth this word that will guide us, that we will value, that will remind us of who we are and who we have been meant to be this year. I am that I am. I am in the heart and in the mind of God. I am in the presence of the divine. So take another deep breath. Let's trust and have faith that the stone already knows the name which will be placed on it. 
that God's vision for ourselves is showing up through this word. And so in the stillness and in the silence, we are open, we are receptive to have this word revealed to us. Open, receptive to being guided in the stillness of this moment, in the quiet and the stillness of my mind, in the stillness of this great heart within us, we give thanks for that name, that word, that value that has shown up or is on its way to show up for us. And we give thanks already for knowing that it is through this embodiment of this guiding star that we are in the flow of good and that we see our lives as the windows of heaven we see our lives as a blessing to the world and we see ourselves as being greatly blessed. And so we give thanks for this time and this clarity. We give thanks for the gift of gratitude within us, knowing that that energy also moves us forward into a deeper, more expansive knowing. I am that I am powerful beyond measure, love fully expressed, peace here and now, I am that I am, here and now. We give thanks that we are blessed and we are a great blessing. So it is. Take a deep breath with me and know no, God is, I am, amen, and amen. We hope you enjoyed this episode of the Positive Spiritual Living Podcast, brought to you by Unity on the Bay, a spiritual community located in Miami, Florida. Unity on the Bay is supported by the generosity of its community. If you'd like to make a donation or learn more about Unity on the Bay, please visit unityonthebay.org. You can also follow Unity on the Bay on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for even more positive spiritual inspiration. Until next time, thanks for listening and many blessings. Namaste. Namaste.